Everybody, welcome once again. It's Thursday night, time for another edition of Hanging and Banging Artist on Lockdown. I'm your host, Ron Onesti, from Rock and Roll Heaven, right outside of Chicago in St. Charles, Illinois, the Arcata Theater. And uh, tonight is a very, very special, um, kind of an emotional uh, edition of uh, Hanging and Banging here with my uh, with my two brothers, uh, the AP slash Apathy Brothers. And we're going to bring you right to, to the microphone in a second here. But tonight is a very very special uh, edition, as I mentioned, because this is our celebration of life and, and the memory of, uh, of a man who has uh, touched so many lives. Uh, he's a, a, a bass player, was a bass player extraordinaire, of course, um, originally with Van- Vanilla Fudge, of course, and, and, uh, and had several bands we'll talk about uh, uh, later on. But Tim Bogert, uh, we lost on January 13th at the age of 76 to cancer, and again, another Another one gone too soon, another legend, another icon. I'm going to be talking to his bandmates, we will be talking to his contemporaries, and uh, really, this is a, a big club of fans that, um, that we're going to be talking about the life and times and their memories of Mr. Tim Bogert. So, without any further ado, let me bring the brothers, and I'm going to hold off on Carmine for a second, because if there's one show that this is extremely special, uh, especially about uh, Carmine Peace, it's this one. So give me a second, Carmine. But first of all, I'd like to bring your brother, my brother. Uh, you know him from Dio. You know him from Black Sabbath, another legendary icon behind the drums, Mr. Vinny Apice. Hey. Up, how you doing, Hey, man? how you doing, Ron? It's good well, to what, see you. All that aside, what's with the white sweater? So here's the thing. <laughs> I knew you were going to give it. So uh, what is it, our 30, I don't know, maybe 35th, 36th uh, week, whatever we're doing here is over six months doing it. And every week I've had a shirt that was in tribute to our guest or two. And, um, and you know, we got hit. And I'm going to give you a, a freaking sorry excuse, but it's the truth. You know, in Chicago, we got hit with 14 inches of snow. And oh. I, put a, I put a sweater on today. I'll be honest with you. So wow. I have, if you look behind me here, there's what would be on my shirt right now. See that? That's, that's today. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. But yeah. I knew you were going to give me some crap about it. I knew it. Of course. <laughs> but you look good. You look good. It wouldn't be the same. So if I did So didn't. you know what? We've got a big show here. We got Yeah, some, let's go I mean, on. It's a bittersweet thing. We got a lot of joking. We always do. But this is a bittersweet show tonight. And let's bring uh, a guy to the microphone, obviously your brother and uh, the big brother to so many others as well in this industry. As I mentioned before in several uh, editions here, you know, there's, been, there's, there's few of uh, you guys out there that have touched so <clears> many <throat> professional lives. And um, Carmine Apice is one of them from Vanilla Fudge, of course, uh, bandmate to, uh, to Tim Bogert. And he's going to have a, not only is he host of this show, uh, but he is also a very special guest tonight. Uh, Vinny, uh, uh, Vinny, let's bring on your brother. Carmine. Carmine. Hey. How you doing, buddy? Good. I wasn't going to say anything about the shirt. I was going to say the background <laughs> looks really good. Well, yeah, you know. The background's nice. Well, I've got my, uh, I've got my uh, records up on the wall, too. Yeah, you um, you look like a newscaster now. Yeah, I I saw. <laughs> I think I sold on this one. I sold uh, this one here. Wait a second, this one. Uh, it's I sold forty seven copies. I was very excited. This one here is my somewhat platinum because I did sell. I did hit the fifty copy mark, so I'm very excited. There about you go. It. Oh, nice, nice. Um, but anyway, Carmine, you know this is a very uh, as I mentioned to 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 Vinny, the drum monster, um, a very special show. Obviously, um, yeah. you know you're a host of this show. But tonight, um, you're a very, very special and honored guest on our show because uh, obviously you lost your brother here. Uh, your other brother in Tim Bogert been together since the early 60s, started Vanilla Fudge together. Yeah. And uh, um, just just brutal, uh, I can just imagine. Yeah. And you so, know, we got, we got Tim's wife watching tonight too. Oh, God so. bless her. God bless yeah. her oh, family. Cool. And uh, this is out to you, my dear, and your family. Our hearts yeah. are with the Bogert family. And um, this is from all of us in the rock and roll world, the music world. Um, God bless uh, Tim, and, and thanks to 
respect him for everything he's done for not just for music but for musicians and we're going to hear from yeah. someone like billy sheehan and uh, other guys that that um uh have been affected uh influenced uh by the likes and and and, and the, the music and and the the, the methodology of uh, tim bogart so you know what what i'd like to do carmine because again i know you've got a lot to talk about uh with tim and what i'd like to do i'd like to bring all our guests out because you know yeah. we love jam sessions those are great you know we talked to david fishoff uh from the school of rock last uh, uh um i'm sorry the classic uh, uh the rock camps are our last edition and uh and it always finishes with this great big jam well tonight i'd like this to be like a like an audio like a verbal jam all yeah. in tribute to our yeah. brother Tim Bogart. So let's uh, let's bring him out. Um, I'll start out with Warren. You know him from the Allen Brothers Band. You know him from Government Mule. Um, this guy, as far, as far as rock and roll historian, this guy knows his stuff, and uh, he's had some great words about Tim Bogart. Let's bring Warren Haynes uh, out. Uh, Warren, so good to see you, and thank you for being part hey, of this. Warren. Hey, Warren. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, good uh, to see you, buddy. My pleasure. Glad to be here. How you yeah. been holding up during this whole pandemic thing? Uh, it's tough, you know, it's tough for all of us. And, uh, yeah. I think we're all thinking the same thing is let's get back to work. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, we're feeling that it's, uh, maybe there's some uh, light around the, at the end of the tunnel. I think we're feeling at this point, maybe summer, you know, I, I, we hope so. Yeah. Let's, uh, keep our fingers crossed, but, uh, you know, I, I keep telling people I haven't been home this much since I was 15. <laughs> uh, all uh, of us. It is, yeah. I I haven't gone this long without gigging since I was 15. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know everyone's feeling it. Another guy that a very good uh, friend of our show, friend of the Arcata Theater, and obviously uh, a friend and follower of Mr. Tim Bogart. Let's bring from Mr. Big, Winery Dogs, of course, and so many other uh, bands. But again, another bass legend, our good friend, Mr. Billy Sheehan. How you doing, Billy? Doing great. Doing great. great. Wonderful yeah. to see all you guys, Warren, Carmine, yeah, man. Vinny, and Ron, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, we might be in trouble. You got the bass in your hand. I, know. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Are you going to show it? You're going to show us some of Timmy's licks? Absolutely. You know, we got uh, all kinds of things going on uh, tonight, man. It's going to be great. You know, you're yeah. like uh, Bumblefoot. I never see it without a freaking instrument in your hand. It's crazy. <laughs> there oh, it is. There it is. Yeah, man. Hey, let's bring out. We got another brother that's waiting, waiting to come on to the show. We're going to do this big old jam session, this audio verbal jam s- session in, in tribute to Tim uh, Bogart, our brother that we lost uh, on January um, 13th. But you know him from the Fab Faux, but you also know him from all of the Conan O'Brien shows, Tonight Show, the Conan Show. It's really an honor to have him. I haven't met him before, but I'm really excited to see him um, from, uh, again, from Conan. Mr. Jimmy Vivino, let's get him on. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Hey, hey Jimmy. Ron. Hey, hey, Billy, how are you? Hey, everybody. Hey, Hi, Jimmy. I got to talk about the shirt. I got to talk about the yeah. shirt, too. Because, you know, Italians, are wet. you're going to get a gravy stain on that. Know. And, you know, you don't wear white. We just don't wear white. I know. Right. I know. I got, it's funny because I got to play the meatballs right there waiting for me. So it's uh, You get uh, one rope. One road meatball, it's all over. <laughs> it's all over. Hey, 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 hey Warren, everybody, man. Hey, hey, y'all. Uh, How you doing, this man? Is a, this is a testament to this beard started about here last March. That's and, crazy, uh, man. <laughs> That's I, crazy. I refuse to dye it or cut it until I want to. Uh, I want to grow one, but then I want to do the whole comb over thing. I think I think that'll help. Oh, good. Out. <laughs> well, we had we just got rid of that guy, didn't we, with the comb over? But go ahead. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hey, yeah. uh, thank you for joining us, Jimmy. Well, another I, Italian cousin you're, of you're ours. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, really I appreciate know it. You peppered it with a couple of non Italians, but they're all, you know, they're all. <laughs> no, it, it can't all be the garlic. We've got to <laughs> throw a little parsley mom. in there, too. Uh, I'm, I'm married <laughs> to an Italian, so. Now, are you <laughs> sure you are. You really are. <laughs> <laughs> we got our sympathy. Now you got us feeling sorry for you. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right, we got another guy that, uh, again, you know, it's really uh, an honor to, to bring him to the show. A very special individual, you know. You know him uh, for his obviously his guitar playing, but um, also had some special moments with uh, our uh, subject of honor, Mr. Tim Ber- Boger tonight. Uh, let's bring him to the stage. Another Italian cousin, uh, Mr. Joe Bonamassa. How you doing, Joe? Yeah. Hey, Joe. I'm doing great. Doing hey, great, Joe. Joe. <laughs> nice to see you, gentlemen. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, producing Jimmy Hall, the legendary Jimmy Hall here in Nashville. Oh, wow. oh, that's awesome. And he wanted me to send his regards and, and says he has 
lots of fond memories of, of Wet Willie and 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 yeah. Beck Bogart at a piece doing shows. Yeah. 73, 74, and um, was really, you know, really sad to to learn of Tim's passing, and and yeah. sure. so was I. Where where does Jimmy live now? Is he, Jimmy's uh... been in Nashville for forty one years. He likes to wow. say. It, but, <laughs> but I think finally he he's been talking about moving to California because he I think the weather's finally, you know, enough is enough. So, but uh, yeah. it's been great. Well, thanks for joining us, Joe. It's very a very cool. special, very special show tonight. And I save uh, the introduction of these last two guys. But I'd like to bring them out at the same time because um, you know, obviously, not only were they were they musical brothers of Mr. Bogart, but um, but also, from my understand, Carmine, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time that uh, you three uh, musical brothers have gotten together, uh, you know, uh, vocally here since the passing of of Tim. Oh yeah. Um, so let's bring your and bandmates. And before. And before. Yes. So let's bring your bandmates, Tim Bogert's brand, bandmates together, the members of Vanilla Fudge. We've got Vince Martell, guitarist, oh, guitar. and of course Mark Stein on the keys. Yeah. Us tonight. Yeah. Wow. Hey everybody, how you all doing? This is a hey, all star team here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. We, we got nine Vin guys. We could be a we could be a baseball team here. Yeah. The Brady we lost, Brady bunch. We lost Vinny. No, nope. I can't see Where's, Vinny. We gotta get Vinny, uh, another Vinny. He's probably Vinny. Vinny. Warren Moto, Warren Haynes, two of my favorite yeah. ball players. Hey. Well, we'll get we'll get years. thank we'll you, man. And I got to tell you, Mark. You know, we've been doing this show for uh, for well over six months, 36, 37, 38 episodes. What it is, and I tell you what, I have not. I still love the way we start the show every time with the get set me free. Why don't you baby? Just, I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. And it gets, it sets the table. So gentlemen, no, thank you for joining cool. us tonight. And uh, right. you know, this is a, this is a real special show, obviously. Um, you know, and I, I, I hats off to, to the members of course of vanilla fudge, not only for what you've done, uh, you know, since 67 with the fudge, getting it going, but um, also tonight paying tribute uh, to Tim, you know, um, uh, Carmine, you know, I, I got to start with you. I mean, you know, besides the obvious, um, what is the passing of Tim mean to you at, at this particular time? Well, for me, it's been really rough. A month ago, I was talking to Tim and we and his wife, and we were all in tears about the fact that he was going to pass. And and Tim was very brave. And to me, you know, he's like a brother. I, I went to so many bands with him, still played him, you know, uh, as late as, uh, I don't know, 2010 or 11. And, uh, you know, he's definitely one of my favorite bass players to play with. I, I, I think it's him and Tony Franklin are my two favorite guys to play with. And, you know, Tim was the original, you know, Tim was the original maniac yep. bass player. Yep. <laughs> and he knew how to, he knew how to play a groove and he knew how to go out there and come back. And sometimes he, never came back he used to go out there and, <laughs> and just stayed out there <laughs> yeah, and i was held holding the groove and i'd say tim come on back <laughs> but we, we had a thing it's like like me and my brother when we play together we just looked at each other and we know what we were thinking you know mm -hmm. yeah. okay unfortunately we have the very last track that tim recorded on a vanilla fudge track we recorded uh, a year in about a year in a a uh, half ago. It's a Supreme Songs. We, we Mark did a great arrangement of this uh, Stop in the Name of Love. Yay. And we put it together and we went over Jorgen's house. Jorgen is the bass player from Government Mule. Mm -hmm. And we put Tim down. And at the point, he, he wasn't feeling great, but you know what? He did a great job. Hey, and guys, the thing that guys. screwed it up was, was the drum tracks. The drum tracks screwed it up. So I'm going to fix those drum tracks in my studio here. And then we're gonna um, we're gonna get it mixed and properly and get it finished and, and really try and do something with it. But That's and great. we have a picture. I believe I believe I gave it to Ben, a producer. A picture of me, Jorgen, and Tim at that studio. It was the very last, the very last thing that, the very last photo I did with Tim. And I think it's the last musician type photo that Tim ever did. So when was this? This was a year ago. The day, he yeah, he died on January 13th this year. Right. It was January 14th. There it is. January 14th of 220. That was at Jorgen's studio. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
God That's bless cool. him. Yeah. God and bless you know, him. He, he bought that bass specifically to do that session because he always played six string basses and he knew that I liked him better on a four string. <laughs> oh, so really? He, so he got that bass just to do this session with us. You had uh, that much influence on him and, and to the point where you dictated what bass he used? Well, well no, I don't know. He, he just knew that I loved the way he played four string. That's awesome. You know? And I did. When, when he played the, the six string, as Billy knows, it's not the same as a four string. Yeah, That's true. Soulful. Right? What, what's the difference, Billy? Well, Tim uh, lived on that four string for so long that when he switched over to five, I kind of little little tear came to my eye and going to sit. <laughs> but it's just, uh, it's, you can concentrate more, I think, on your bass playing than, than mapping out where you got to go. Uh, for me, it's just a, it's just the way to go. Uh, I, right. Yeah. Hey, Mark, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, uh, uh, another uh, or Fudge original here. And, and just like, I, you know, I got to toss it to you, just like I asked Carmine. I mean, a brother of yours since the beginning. Um, What's, yeah. uh, what's his passing mean to you beside the obvious? Well, you know, I, back at, way back in 1965, uh, I was playing in a band called Rick Martin and the yep. Showman. Yep. And it was, uh, you know, it was a top 40 band. I guess I was, man, I think I was 18 years old. And uh, we were playing places in the city like the Headline or the Petment Lounge. Yep. Wagon Wheel, all the hot spots in the city. And our original bass player uh, got drafted. So I guess off to Vietnam he went. And I remember Rick uh, calling me up and say, well, I know this guy, Tim Bogart, he's, you know, he's real good. So we run away. I think we were playing in a bowling alley somewhere outside <laughs> the city. <laughs> and we picked Timmy up in his house in Ridgefield, New Jersey. And that's the first time I ever met him. He comes, you know, bopping into the car with a little bebop hat on and how you doing, man? So, you know, we never played together. We never, it was just like that. Just, I guess Rick must have told them uh, what songs we were going to be doing. Mm -hmm. But we never rehearsed, and we just went to the gig. And, uh, I mean, it, obviously it was rough as hell, but uh, I remember it was like, wow, this guy, I was really impressed. And then uh, we just started hanging out. You know, we became really good friends. We were teenagers. And, and uh, you know, Tim was heavily... Uh, Influenced by James Jameson, you know, you talk about a four string bass, you know, the four, four string, you know, Fender Precision. So he was heavily influenced by him and he loved Paul McCartney. So uh, to me, Timmy became a, a combination of those two guys on steroids, you know, wow. because it's true. <laughs> it's powerful. He's incredible excursions, but, you know, you'd always come home. Uh, uh, he, he turned out to be pretty amazing. And. You know, we used to hang out and talk about one day becoming pop stars. You know, back in those days, the name rock star didn't exist yet. So you were sure. a pop star. So uh, we'd go and see bands like the Young Rascals, oh, yeah. get blown away by that blue eyed soul. And then and then the Pigeons is the band that we had. And, uh, and that's when Vinnie Martell joined us, you know, and uh, we we went to. Uh, a place in Long Island called the Eye, and I'll never forget. I saw a band called the Vagrants. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> well, that's right. Nice. West, who recently passed a few months ago as well. Yep. And when I saw the Vagrants, you know, we we saw the Vagrants. We were, our minds were so blown by the dynamics and the drama that they were putting into these songs. I went home that night and I said, "I got to do that." I said, "We have to do this." So the wheels started turning, and. Uh, you know, the drummer that we had, Joey Brandon, was a good drummer, but he was more like a Charlie Watts guy, you know. So we needed somebody that could, you know, cut the symphonic, uh, you know, long-winded arrangements that we wanted to put together with a lot of harmonies. And me and Tim went club to club looking for a good drummer. And we went into this place one night called the Choo Choo Club in mm -hmm. Garfield, New Jersey. Sure. And uh, there was a uh, Dean Parrish was the artist, a really soul singer and, I think it was a band called Thursday's Children, and this guy yeah. Carmine, right? Yeah. This guy Carmine was playing, and uh, we sat at the bar, like right close to the stage. And this cat was like blowing us away, man. It was just so powerful with that bass drum and the funk and all these syncopated, you know. And I think he was singing some stuff. Me and Tim, 
we, we looked at each other and who's going to go talk to him? I said, I'll go talk to him. <laughs> so I go, I think I went back stage. I said, dude, would you come outside. We want to talk to you about something, you know, and we explained about the music that we wanted to try and create. And Carmine said, yeah, man, that sounds awesome. I'm in. Next thing you know, the three of us started rehearsing, uh, you know, with Vinnie Martell, of course, and in, uh, in a bar in Bayonne, New Jersey. You know, probably 10 days later, you know, my dad <clears throat> got Phil Basile, who owned the Action House and a bunch of clubs out in Long Island to sure. give us a listen. So we went out and audition. He liked us. And we started from there. And uh, Tim uh, started to develop his style on stage. Not only was he a great bass player with tremendous feel, but visually he was like incredible. <laughs> well, he would mm -hmm. dance around Big the part. stage and come yeah. back to the middle of the stage on the downbeat. And we actually all, the Vanilla Fudge was, you know, created that visual drama, you know, collectively. But, uh, yeah. and you know, Mark, that was the first bass player I ever played with. Really? And all my other bands had left hand bass on a keyboard. Blown away. Felix style. I was just blown away with him. I said, oh my God, this guy is amazing. And Mark's voice was great. And Vinny was great. And so I was really, you know, I had the thing in the back of my head. Let me check these guys out. But sure. I wasn't really in until we played. When we played, I said, that, that's it. I mean, you know. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's really incredible tonight, especially, you know, again, as I mentioned, this is the first time that the, the balance of uh, the fudge is, is together. Uh, uh, I'm back, not, guys, just to yeah. let you know. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's hey. who I'm going to now. The, you know, again, the balance of the fudge, which is really exciting to have you, Vince Martell, guitarist. Um, you know, we were talking to uh, Mark and Carmine about their, uh, you know, how this, how Tim's passing has affected them. Give us a little insight on your relationship with Tim Bogart. Okay. Uh, for me, I got a couple of things I'd like to say about Timmy. I wrote it out because uh, I wanted to get all the ideas and kind of like what we heard, what everybody say and Mark and uh, Carmine. You know, it was always an honor and adventure to work with Timmy. Uh, in 66, Mark and Timmy uh, uh, and drummer Joey Brennan and I used to rehearse at Timmy's house, front porch. Mark had his new B3 organ. I had a red 335 and a twin. Timmy had his precision bass B15 amp. We soon became the pigeons. After rehearsals, we'd go for sodas and ice cream nearby, a la Happy Days. How ironic. We later became Vanilla Fudge. Timmy loved ice cream. Really? Okay. That's funny. And, and there's oh more. God. There's more. There's more. Here's the next part. We were playing a choo-choo club in Lodi, New Jersey. We were doing R&B tunes. Timmy told Mark mm -hmm. about a drum he saw with a funky foot. So we later became the Pigeons with Carmine. Timmy played sax in high school, and his bass playing was influenced by that. He had an uncanny way of going off on a wild tangent and coming back yep. with precision on the top of the beat. Mark and us would dissect the tunes of the day. We'd reconstruct them. We all added our parts to bring these monsters to life. Okay? No. <laughs> all right, hey, one, more list, all right. Okay, right. one more list. Okay, hey, guys. One more list. Right, one more. All right, go ahead. One more list. Part. In 2006, we did Out Through the Indoor, a Zeppelin album. Timmy became a little bit more conservative in his playing, giving the song exactly what was needed. He locked it with Carmine, and they were like two players with one heartbeat. When I talked to Timmy a few weeks ago, Timmy said to me, The Lord is calling me home. We prayed, and I know that Timmy is rocking in heaven. Heck Till yeah. we meet again, brother. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. God bless Amen. him. Very good. Great message. Great message, Amen. man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Joe Bonamassa. Now, I, I was doing some research on this, and I pulled up a great freaking video. You know, obviously, the, the, the one, um, uh, the Beck uh, uh, Bogart of Peace album, you know, you doing superstition with them. But then I, I found out that there was a shot that it almost was Bonamassa, Bogart in a piece. How did yeah. that go down? <laughs> um, well, I've met, you know, I met Carmine and Tim years ago. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I was a fan. I mean, I was a fan and then couldn't believe I was hanging out with these guys, you know. <laughs> and well, they called you your little, they called you their little brother. 
That's right. how young you were. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I, you know, and, you know, the one of the things that I, I just wanted to say about, you know, you know, Tim and 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 Carmine, it's like you know, I, I've gotten the, the opportunity to meet a lot of my heroes, most of which are on, on this on this broadcast. And 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 lucky are the few that when you get to meet your heroes, they're they turn out to be super genuine sweet people as well mm -hmm. because i've met a i've met some heroes of mine that weren't like that and 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 it kind of ruined you know their music for me a little bit and i try to detach them but um yeah we jammed a few times and it was great and, we, and, and unfortunately we never got it together but it was it was one of those things that um it was a thrill of a lifetime to play with with carmine and tim because I had studied so much the intricacies of how that rhythm section worked and was trying my best to kind of, you know, to, to just be, you know, one of those guys, you know, and, and, you know, I, I can never, I could never replace the other JB. Um, <laughs> you know, we you share, the close. 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 But, but not the talent, you know, um, but uh, it was, it's, it's a, it's a great, it's a it's a great honor to to now and to to pay tribute to a man I have a deep respect for musically, but but as as a friend and 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 a, and a gentleman who who was a consummate gentleman at at, at all times yeah. and couldn't and, and and could you know regardless of how many he had two strings or six or t twenty he could he knew what to play and he and he would always create this wonderful tension within this the the music yeah yeah. You know, Billy, you uh, thank you, Joe. You know, Billy, you you you've you've mentioned him several times as as being one of your top, if not the top, the top. Um, yeah, influence with regards to bass playing. I mean, uh, what I know, you know, you you you've adjusted the the Telecaster part of your of your of your of your bass. I mean, every what is the number one thing that, uh, of influence you think you can attribute to Tim? Well. Uh... Tim and Carmine together uh, were a force of nature. And that's how I learned what you play on bass, is you play what the drummer plays. The bass drum and the snare drum. And Tim was doing the tom fills, too. And every move that Carmine did, Tim did a corresponding bass move. And uh, that, to me, would define how you play bass. And uh, that's I got that from, from Tim, for sure. There were other guys that influenced me, but... Tim was the number one guy. When I finally did meet him, uh, he was the sweetest guy to me, the nicest guy. Uh, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, beginning to get my my spot, you know, and he was just uh, just so generous to me and so kind. And But his uh, his bass playing, I, I think he described it as uh, uh, Motown on acid, which would be James James <laughs> on acid. But it makes perfect sense because it's still – it, it's kind of exactly like that. He goes, uh, like Carmen said earlier, he'd go way out, and sometimes stay out there. But, man, he always came back. And uh, I just uh, modeled myself after after this record. I mean, that was uh, yeah, man, so important to me. You, you, look at these handsome gentlemen on the back here, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We used to sit and, and look at the album. Plus, it had a naked girl on the front. That didn't hurt at all. That was awesome. Yeah, of course. But, but you know, Billy, that's uh, that's that's like a, a reoccurring uh, statement from people of just how generous he was from a personal. Like he will take the time to set you straight or give you those tips. Absolutely, and a vocalist too. What a great, yeah, great, yeah. Uh, what a he, great hits, uh, he hits the highest notes of all. Of really, us. I just In saw that. I just saw the uh, the live <laughs> with uh, Jeff. Uh, back to superstition, where he, he just hits this high note and slides up and keeps on going, keeps on yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his yeah, timing yeah. while he's playing, he's singing <laughs> while he's playing, playing guitar and singing is is a lot easier yeah. playing bass and singing. Yeah. But I certainly have mastered it. And Tim was uh -oh. a grandmaster. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, you know, uh, Jimmy Vivino. First of all, before we talk about Tim, I just got to say that I I, just, I love on your site how you say that the best guitar is the one you don't have. Oh, um, yeah. what? Well, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that yeah. says a lot right there, right? Well, um, you know, I get, I, I always get, uh, uh, Joe Bonamassa always blames me for his habit. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 but rightly so, um, you know, I, I, and, and about, about Timmy, um, 
you know, those records take me for a little while to be as the benchmark for oh, great man. bass playing. Oh, uh, the, and and yeah. not only, I don't know if it's it, all four of them putting into those arrangements, a uh, great Trade Martin song, which sounds nothing like that uh, anywhere else. in the, it, mm -hmm. It's a, outer space. But also Shadow Morton, who created little dramas on all of his records with the Shangri-Las, um, you know, I, I believe was partially instrumental in that vibe that was created on that record. That's the greatest breakout record. <coughs> guys, you know, when I was, I was 10 years old, younger than everybody. So these guys, I was like the kid looking over the fence at wow. the fudge of the rascals, <clears throat> and, you know, and, and, to, and when, to reflect on what Joe said, when, when people step out of your record collection into your life, it's the greatest thing. And, uh, and it's Tim, a great statement. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's true for all of us, though. I think it's true for every one of us. Uh, yeah. That bass part, Timmy tries so hard when that song starts to contain himself. Mm -hmm. But by the time, <laughs> if you don't want me, well, he starts going. He just, and he's singing one of the parts live at the same time, you know, yeah. and, and, it, and it just takes off. It just, to, and nobody played like that ever. Yeah. Even Jamerson didn't. It was more of a pattern with Jamerson. With Timmy, yeah. it was spurts of Jamerson, spurts of McCartney, a little bit of uh, you know uh, jazz, madness. jazz players. Yeah, a little Hendrix. bit of madness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know and, that, uh, that's the only song. That's the only song that Shadow Morton brought to the band. The rest really? of the album was was our stage show. Yeah, just recorded. It wasn't. Yeah. you know, no overdubs. The only, we, the only overdubs we did was some vocals and maybe uh, uh, people get ready. We might have overdubbed a few background but, but, vocals. But a great band makes you think, as a kid, they wrote all those songs. Sure. Yeah. You know? And yeah. the Rascals the Rascals were kind of the forerunners of that, you know? Yeah, Slow they and were. Everything. And you then David, every God, interview. David Forgotti said to me, you know why they're, you guys know David, right? He's, you know, you know Dave. Yeah. He says, you know yeah. why they're the Vanilla Fudge? Because they took the rascals and slowed it down, like fudge <laughs> dripping down. Oh my god! <laughs> and even, yes. and even their white rattles, little white. Yeah. <laughs> it's like more Ronnie Spector yeah. than Ronnie Spector, you know. And it's funny and, we had the same we had the same speed vibratos as well. Yes, it was beautiful. Now I <laughs> met Timmy in in, in 1971. I think restrictions had just come out ah, sometime yeah. around October, November, 1971. Evil. And, uh, Cactus was going to play a show at Ramapo College in New Jersey. Oh, my God. And my band, I was 16, my band opened up for Cactus at that oh, show. Wow. And, wow. Uh, and, and, uh, and Timmy, and there was a couch on the side of the stage. Timmy spent half of his set sitting on that couch. He wasn't even <laughs> on stage. He was on the couch playing like this, you know, <laughs> just looking over, telling my brother, hey, get lost. You're, you got a beautiful girlfriend, Jerry. Get lost, you know. He's telling my brother. And, uh, and at the end of the night, I'll, I'll end the story with this. At the end of the night, one of your road crew forgot the SVT. I think he was playing an Ampeg SVT at the time. Uh, they, they left it outside the, the door. And, uh, and our fathers were coming in their station wagons to pick us up, <laughs> put our gear. And two guys in the band are like the devil and the angel on your shoulder. And one's going, let's take it. It's Tim Bogerts. we got to take it. The other guy's, we can't take it. It's Tim Bogerts. We can't do that. Finally, your crew comes back and grabs the amp. Uh, that moment uh, of, do you, do you take it <laughs> or what? You know, uh, and, and, of course, the band didn't know what the crew left behind. But and actually, that's the reason. Good, good, Joe. Uh, gentlemen, I, I, I just have my, my special guest is here to record on Jimmy Hall's record. I got I to gotta run. I just wanted to say it's an honor to be here. I love Tim Boger. I love all of you. And uh, thanks for inviting me. Sorry I have tell, to. Tell Jimmy I said hi. I will. And, I me, too. me too. Me too, and, man. All of us. Yeah, all of us. Thank you as good as ever. And, and it's just a celebration of music. I, I love you all. Thank, thank, thanks for having me. Thanks, Sorry, Joe. Okay, okay, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. All right. Ciao. Uh, you know, back, thanks a lot, Joe, for joining us. Joe Bonamassa joining hey, us on hey, a special hey, tribute Jimmy, to Tim. Jimmy, that, that record restrictions had evil on it. And evil yeah. was the do, 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 we played with, with Warren uh, yeah. on one of the one of the New Year's Eve gigs. Yeah, that that's I, right. I played yeah. we I think we did together five New Year's Eve gigs. Yeah. Yeah. With Warren and you know what's and Governor funny when Danny Lewis won one one of the at one of the sort of like sound checks and Carmine and I were there and 
and uh, and he's doing the keep me hanging on. He's doing the organ intro. Mark's fantastic com composition of an intro. Yes, and absolutely. and Carmine is here. Is so good. Goes wait a minute. That note is that note. Is wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and he just he just knows. Look, guys. A lot of people don't respect their records. Uh, we yep. worship their records, you know, yep. as players. And it always bothered me working with Chuck Berry or Bo Diddley or people who didn't give a shit about their records. That to us were, you know, but when you see Carmine know every note on that, every guy's part, he knows the guitar <laughs> part. He knows all the parts. He's like James Brown. It's like, you know, he could, you could arrange, uh -huh. you could fix any band, kick their ass, you know? And, let me uh, ask, and, um, uh, yeah. part, I'm sorry, Jimmy, but let me no, I'm ask. I'm done, I'm uh, done, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, I appreciate it. I really, really do. Um, uh, but uh, Warren, you know, again, you're, you're one of those, uh, I've been following you for a long time, man, and it's an honor to, to, to see you here tonight, and thanks for joining us. Um, you know, you're one of those guys that really knows their rock and roll history. And, um, you know, some of your, um, your, your comments about Tim Bogert were just so heartfelt. And um, can you give us your uh, kind of testimonial to Tim? Because I think it really says a lot about Tim, the musician, and Tim, the man. Well, you know, the, you keep me hanging on was the first thing that I heard. I was seven years old. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. Oh, you're killing me, man. Hey, oh, man. Bonamassa <laughs> makes me feel old, so uh, I'm doing it back to you guys. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But so I, That's you good. know, I heard from the very beginning. Um, but when then I heard Cactus <clears throat> a, after that, and then I heard uh, uh, Beck Bogart in a piece. And the thing that always struck me with Tim was he had this "fuck you" attitude <laughs> that uh, a lot of us adopted. You know, uh, Alan Woody, my partner in crime and government mule. That was his whole thing was, uh, fuck you, I'm going to do it my way. And you, I think what Tim contributed, like, uh, I think Mark was the first person to say it tonight. The groove was always there. There was no denying that. There were a lot of cats that could go crazy but couldn't groove. Mm -hmm. Tim could groove his ass off mm -hmm. and go crazy and somehow came up with this distorted sound that, made the whole band sound bigger made the whole band sound louder. And, uh, it, it was just incredible. You know, when, when we started government mule in 94, and I talked a little bit about this in the, the thing you were referring to that I wrote about Tim, mm -hmm. uh, it was based on the, the power trio, the, right. the whole art of an improvisational rock trio. And in the power trio, <clears throat> the bass player and the drummer, have to do a bigger job than they have to do in, in any other band. Uh, everybody does, but especially the bass player and the drummer. The way Carmine and Tim played together, whether it, it, any band they were in, left this blueprint for us, us to follow. And there were people, Jack and Ginger did it. You know, there were, uh, there were people that played that way that made us not want to settle for less, you know. So when we started the trio, we thought, all of our heroes, we got to set the bar really high. We can't go out there with some wimpy ass bass sound mm -hmm. that uh, people have been recording uh, for decades now. Cause I talked about also how the, the bass sound got more and more polite through the years and rock and roll mm -hmm. suffered as, as a result, you know, are you referring so, to that, that dirty bass? Uh, yeah, concept? absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. The, the bass in all the music that we loved, even Jamerson, you know, uh, even there was some dirt there. They weren't trying to clean it up. McCartney was dirty. Everybody was dirty. It, it wasn't till the mid to late seventies that people started trying to sterilize the base. Yeah, and the uh, drum. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and and the drum. And the drum. Yeah, and the drum. You know, but uh, w when you're playing in a in a trio, you have to have that that engine behind you that's just firing on all cylinders and, and going all the time. Otherwise it, 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 uh, it, it, it you might as well add an instrument, you know, the, the key mm -hmm. to, and, and, and I, when I think of trios, like I'm also including Zeppelin and the who and, and cactus and 
you know, bands where there was a front man, uh, you know, we're, we're thinking about that as well. But Tim was one of the, the models that, that we all studied. And it was just a way of, of making the music go when you thought it couldn't go higher, it's going to go higher, you know? Uh, and, and to me, that's such a, a lost art. It's great that people are still uh, kind of studying that and, and hopefully it'll be around forever because there's no reason to settle for less than what the best music can be. And you guys showed us, you know, uh, Carmine, you, you and Tim showed us a lot of, of what a rhythm section can be. It doesn't have to be, uh, just playing what the producer tells you to play. Yep. <laughs> well, that's what's been, been said about the fudge and, and in particular about Tim. Absolutely. Really setting the bar, really that, setting the bar for bands. Right. Absolutely. And the vanilla fudge was like, you know, even though I was young, it knocked my head off. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and Beck Boger and the Peace knocked my head off in a whole different yeah. way. And I, w I went back recently and listened to that live in Japan. Um, and man, some of the stuff that Tim was playing on there. Yeah. It's so underrated. We have a new one going to come out uh, this year. It's live in 1974 at the London wow. Rainbow. Woo! Has, has I heard seven, about that. It has seven new songs. And wow. when I talked to Jeff after we mixed it, Jeff said, this is a great record. He said, not only is it great, but we're all playing very uh, humorous. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, like I would do something stupid, then Tim would do something stupid to follow me, and you would do something stupid to follow me. You know, so the three of us would, you know, like one one after another would catch what the other one did, something silly, and we would we would answer each other. And I said, Yeah, I guess you're right, because there was a lot of that kind of stuff going on, you know. Three well, it was real quick. jamming, it was all jamming, really. I think my brother when he played with Dio, they had that that same trio consciousness as well with Jimmy Bain and Vinny were a great rhythm section and Vivian Campbell just kind of sailed wow. over them. And I, I know Vinny never recorded like going, okay, well, this one I'm going to play in the verse. And then in the pre-chorus, I'm going to play this every time. And then I'm going to play this. And then I'm going to pan up all my drums and make them sound like pillows. Yeah. You know? And that was Not in the eighties. Like that. that was 1982. <laughs> and I used to love that original Dio band because of it. And it yeah, reminded me of all, all we did. And then when I joined Blue Murder, Tony Franklin, we had the same vibe as me and Tim and that trio vibe that you're talking about, which is nothing like it. Well, let what me about, ask you, you know. What about, uh, what about Timmy using a fog box? Yeah. Nobody, nobody ever did that back then, right? A bass solo, Let's then all of a sudden. Kicked yeah, into the fog an, yeah, That's right. That's right. Yeah. It was an and the, ba scramble. the solo just went up to the moon you know it was just like yeah, yeah. holy shit you know carmine I, we talk tim, about every every week saying, we talk on, about oh, go ahead car tim used to come to like a family party sometimes mm -hmm. when he was little you know so so then he got to hang out with him as a as a person well, that's, oh, yeah. that's that's my question here because every you know we we goof around a lot on this show every week and once in a while it's really cool guys to see like you know the younger brother hit, messing with the older brother and it's kind of cool <laughs> but not only uh vinnie uh, uh did you have carmine as an older brother but obviously you had tim uh, how was he did you have that kind <laughs> of a relationship uh hanging around with these guys like tim as an older brother figure well you know, Tim, Tim, Carmine would bring him over to mom's house in Brooklyn and she would cook pasta and Tim God bless Carmine him. were there. So Timmy was always so sweet and so nice. Great to hang out with. He got along with the whole family, you know, my cousin, just everybody loved yeah. him. And uh, my, I myself was just totally influenced with the fudge. Well, I used to go to the auction house. Parents would take me and my sister when I was nine years old. 10 years old, right in the front of the stage watching. Well, Carmine's in the back, but Timmy was right in front of me. I'm like, holy shit. My friend Angelo, who wound up being uh, the engineer for all the Dio records, we played together. He played bass. So that that was our uh, in, uh, inspiration right there, watching Fudge. I mean, they were just insane, you know. So it's such a good band. And then th one other thing I'd like to say, back then when you watched Ed Sullivan's show, and like the doors were on mm -hmm. or the association. Then the fudge went on. You never seen a bass player <laughs> do that on Ed Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the whole band, but especially Timmy. 
Just <laughs> holy shit. The bass players look, would normally stick to fan there. You look like he was spastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Carmine the, twirling the, and all the double tom stuff and, and, and nobody played get, like this stuff. Couldn't get, Mark and Mark, Vinny. couldn't get Mark's yeah. hands down. Vinny was everybody yeah. looked great. It was awesome. No, Tim was like the Sam Butera of bass. He just was like, <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> the wildest. Yeah. for you old people. Hey, yeah. uh, real quick here, you know, you mentioned Tony Franklin a little bit earlier, Carm, and uh, yeah. obviously legendary bass player, fretless dude. He's got a little, uh, he yeah. couldn't be with us tonight, but he did send yeah. us a message. And let's, let's go to that. Ben? Okay. Fretless monster. Hello, it's Tony yep. Franklin here. Hey, I just want to pass along my huge respect and love to Tim Bogart. It was actually many years later that I became aware of him. Uh, for whatever reason, Vanilla Fudge, BBA, Cactus didn't really break through in the UK. So I didn't hear of him until, until I started working with Carmine Apice. Hi, Carmine. And uh, <laughs> so with my work with him, with, with Blue Murder, with Guitar Zeus, and many projects over the years, and then later on, I actually did some gigs with Carmine and Cactus. And uh, that's when I really dove deeply into what Timmy was doing. And wow, such huge respect. I mean, what he was doing, just jamming in that, in the hard rock context like that. What a groundbreaker, really. And it's, it's a lot of fun to play his parts and get into the spirit of, of his parts, which was always very adventurous just going for it and never know where, where it would go. And then, of course, Carmine was right there with me, with him. So it's the same spirit. So it was really nice to get into that place. And just huge, massive, mad respect and love. Tim, bless yeah. you on your travels onto the next plane. My bass brother, all the best to you all. Thanks for your time and uh, yeah. cheers. 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 Cheers, Tony Cheers, Franklin. Tony. Thank you so much. Uh, you. Nice. My, my question nice. is to the uh, uh, to the to the members of the Fudge here. You know, when you guys were, were doing this, uh, you know, some of the, I mean, you know, looking at some of the stuff that you guys have accomplished, look who you played with, what you played before, who you played after. I mean, it, it blows my mind. Those years when you're when you're working with and, and opening up for, for Paige and the Yardbirds and, and Zeppelin, um, you know. No, no, with, no, with, they opened up for us. I know that. <laughs> I know that. I know. I'm sorry, I meant to say that. So that's what I meant. I mean, that whole thing, that whole, that whole dynamic there. I mean, I know we've talked about it, Karen. But what was, what was Tim's? You know, was he impressed at all? Was he like, just hey, just give me, show me where the baseline is, and and I'll take it from there. What, what do you say, Mark? Um, could, you, um, could you clarify that? I couldn't hear you, uh, Ron. Oh, sorry. No, just like I said, being around when, when you had Zeppelin opening for you guys, when you're working with the, the Yardbirds and Jimmy, uh, was, was, was Tim very much like, I don't want to say starstruck, but I mean, was he in the moment? Were you, was he really feeling it? Oh, no, he was definitely in the moment. I mean, he, he used to, you know, check out Zeppelin, and he, he loved it. I mean, those were the raw groundbreaking days. Uh, they would be starstruck with him. Yeah. Hey? They well, at first, at first they digging. were. At first they were yeah. starstruck, like especially Robert, um, John, uh, and John Bonham. And, and, oh, and I actually, thought you were talking about Tim. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, they were, yeah, but they were, he said they were starstruck as well. They were. But, but Tim wasn't really starstruck kind of guy, you know? You know what I mean, Mark? He wasn't really starstruck kind of guy. But he was always in the moment, always there. He was always, always there. in the moment, and, uh, you know, he, he was a pretty smart dude. I mean, back when he was really young, I remember, really, uh, musically, but he was really an intelligent cat, you know? What did we I mean, used to do? Hey, guys, I got a story for you about Timmy with that. Time, and Hold on, Vinny. I just uh, remember him about having that. conversations uh, on you know talking about you know building cars or talking about the politics of the day or the mm -hmm. war in Vietnam or fashion or whatever and uh, I just like you know half the time I didn't know what he was talking about <laughs> you know he, he was a little bit more mentally mature than than I was anyway at the time it took me a while to catch up to him yeah. but when I finally did catch up to him 
you know, we hooked up pretty good for a number of years after that. You know, we, we used to call him Spock. <laughs> Why? Why? Because, okay, remember, you, could, okay. because you, you could ask him anything and he really? had an answer for you, right, Mark? You, you say, Yeah, yeah, yeah why, no, is, why, does really, that tree yeah. Have, why does that tree have brown and green bark? And Tim would go, Well, <laughs> that's because, and he'd start going. So after a while, we would say, Okay, Spock, you know, and I never uh, heard that about they him. Did, they did it. Yeah. Dig this, yeah. guys. Uh, the quintessential Timmy. L listen to this one. Timmy was always eccentric and something that always sticks in my mind. We were touring Europe, 68, 69. We played a gig in Paris. We did our show. Timmy did his solo. And while Carmine was doing his solo, Timmy sat at the front of the edge of the stage with his legs dangling, Mickey Mouse T-shirt, Round crimson <laughs> sunglasses, right? The colors, man, watching the audience watch us. You guys remember that? Wow, I kind of remember that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. The quintessential. Hey, yeah, he, he used to wear that Mickey Mouse t shirt a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'd like to do, guys, because we are winding down here. It's a great, been a great hour here. But before we go, there's a couple things I'm going to finish. With, uh, with a little uh, special thing uh, on Tim and, and, and him performing. But you know what I'd like to do is I don't know to what degree, and I don't want to get too personal with you guys with regards to any messaging that you had with Tim prior to his, his, uh, uh, his, his horrible passing. But, you know, if there's, if there's a message that you can say to Tim right mm -hmm. now, and actually Vince Martell, I'm, I'm going to start with you and then I'll, I'll call you guys. But what would be a message that you'd say uh, uh, as a final uh, message uh, of goodbye to you, to your brother, Tim. Uh, I would say, uh, Timmy, we loved you. Or we always will. Your greatest bass player I ever worked with. Right on the money all the time. And, you know, a little temperamental. Sometimes we had our differences of opinion. Of course, it's all rock and roll, as everybody does in life, actually. But it's a pleasure and an honor to work with Timmy. And I'm looking forward to rocking with you again. I told this to Timmy. I'm looking forward to rocking with the Lord with you, Timmy. So that's what I'm looking forward to because he was like top notch, the best. Sensitive guy, wonderful guy, and we'll always love Timmy and everybody in rock and roll will never forget him. God bless you, Timmy. Great message. How about you, Warren? <clears throat> well, I, I hope he knew how important he was to rock and roll and how much what he created uh, will carry on for people in the future. His legacy goes far beyond what uh, a lot of people understand. And, and I think a lot of musicians, especially if they don't get to that enormous pop star level, don't realize the impact that they make. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, uh, I hope that, that he, did, uh, but his impact on musicians is going to be around for a long time. Man. Yeah. Thank you very much. We're in great words. How about you, Jimmy Vivino? This, my mic is muted. Oh. Can you hear me? Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, I would just say, uh, Kel Jamerson and Coltrane, we said, hey. <laughs> that's it. He's with his heroes. Yeah, that's all you need. That's yeah. You're right. Uh, he's with his heroes. He, he's with his peers. It's equals. Yep. Yeah. How about you, Billy Sheehan? What would you say to Tim Bo Bogart as a final goodbye? Well, uh, I had a conversation with him on the phone not too long ago, and uh, I knew that he knew that his time was coming, and uh, he was so gracious uh, and so understanding uh, you, we all wonder what what it's going to be like when we get there, and it was just just what a what a uh, an amazing human being exhibiting a life well lived, so well lived that seeing it come to a close was not necessarily a a, a tragedy. Uh, that was that was quite beautiful, and uh, I mentioned to him that uh, you know how important he was to me, and that I stood on his shoulders and thank you for having such incredible shoulders for, for not only myself, but for probably 10,000 other players who, who you were the spark 
and you were the uh, the the uh, fire that 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 launched so many other players, and and sure. all of all of our lives and all of our music is better because of you. Thanks, Billy. Yeah. Vinny Appice, what do you nice. got to say to Tim Bolger? Um, I would say, uh, I mean, I don't play bass, but he was a big inspiration to, to me uh, as a drummer, watching Tim play that good. And he set the bar for having, uh, he played so well that it made me want to practice more uh, to become as good as I can become. Mm -hmm. Inspiration to me in my whole career, you know, and Tom mine, the whole band, Fudge, seeing the Fudge. Sure. It was like inspiring. And, and luckily, uh, my brother Carmine wasn't a wimpy drummer because mm -hmm. it would have been easy to just say, hey, it's Carmine's brother I'm playing. I don't want to hit him too hard. But, you know, Carmine was uh, the monster and uh, I had to be good. Oh, are you to... saying I'm the original drum monster? Yeah, how about oh, it? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm the original. You're the original monster. But Tim was an inspiration just because he played so good and showmanship. And I would, like, I would just stand there and watch him at the action house, Angelo and me. And, man, go home and practice, you know, because uh, he's incredible. So nobody played. How about you, Mark Stein? Yeah, well, for me, uh, you know, I spoke to Tim several times uh, in the last months of his uh, life, you know. Uh, First time uh, he called me, I hadn't spoke to him in a while, you know, and he kind of shocked me I, to, just to hear his voice. I said, well, here's a number come from California. I thought it was one of those sales calls. I said, but I'll pick it up anyway, you know, and it was Tim. And he was Mark, I just wanted to talk. I said, well, man, how you doing? It's good to hear your voice. And he told me he was sick, you know. He told me uh, he told me he had cancer. And I said, whoa, yeah, hang on, back up a minute. And explained to me what's going on. And, you know, he, we, we talked a while about it and he actually told me uh, how liberating it was, the reality of what's going to be happening, you know. And uh, we spoke a few more times after that. And uh, the last time I spoke to him, I guess it was about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, I uh, actually Carmine told me that he wanted me to call him. So I, I gave him a shot. He picked the phone up and uh, we had a really upfront casual conversation. I said, you know, Tim, you know, we, we did something really special in our lives. You know, we, we dared to be different, you know, as a team. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we once walked together as kings. Yeah. Wow. Great words, man. Beautiful. Great words. Great Thank words. you, Mark. So, very nice, Mark. Very good. Thank very you, Mark. Um, Carmine, um, yeah. what would you for say me, to your brother? For me, uh, it was, very difficult. When I found out that he, he said he wouldn't have much time left, I mean, I was crying like a baby, you know. He was like my brother, you know, like like Vinny, you know. And uh, I got choked up, and and I kept telling him you know, that, that I love him. And I said, and you don't know how many other people love you. So I got on the phone and got everybody to call him, like Mark and Vinny and Dwayne Hitchings and this one and that one, everybody called him because what uh, Warren was saying, he didn't realize because he hasn't been playing in a long time, what legacy he really left. I think he forgot, I, you know, yeah. and, and this kind of reminded him and, and he called me and said, man, I really appreciate you having everybody call me. You know, it was, it was really good for my soul you know I said well I'm, I'm glad and and you know I, I told him I would try and help him uh as far as when he does pass uh, to try and help his wife you know go on with the life that you know all the stuff that has to be done for him and he said he, he couldn't stop thanking me you know and I just loved him I mean I told him look we created something that that nobody ever did before we we were the, the number one rock rhythm section for many, many years. And the bands we created all kicked ass. And, yeah. <clears throat> you, know, and you know, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss calling you. I'm going to miss calling, talking to you every, you know, I would call him every couple of weeks, 
three weeks. I call and see what's going on. When I go to L.A., I go out to lunch with him. One time I went out to lunch with him, me, and Lita Ford. That was really <laughs> a weird pairing, yeah. you know, because <laughs> it's Tim looking like a professor, me with my colored hair, and Lita with all her tattoos, sitting sitting at an IHOP in Valencia, you know. <laughs> And, uh, well, you know, Carm, you you played in all three of his bands, Beck Boger to yeah. Peace, of course, The Fudge yeah. and Cactus. And uh, I know you're in particular, but we're all going to miss him. We thank yeah. uh, all of our uh, everybody on our show tonight for, for making this such a special uh, salute to our, our brother, Tim Bogart, who's passed. Yeah. Um, his memory will live yeah. on. His music will live on. And you know why it's going to live on? And uh, from me, the fan side, guys, I want to thank all of you because his music is going to live on through guys like you. We love you. Thank yeah. you. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to close our show. Uh, we got a very special solo, Tim Bogart and Oreo, and it's going to be really, cool. really cool. cool. So once again, thank you all so much. Here's here's to our brother, Tim yeah. Yeah. Bogart, yeah, uh, Leslie West, uh, you know, I mean, uh, 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 Eddie V, um, you know, all these guys, you know, they're, they're going to be with us. But again, God bless you guys for keeping the music alive and their memories and legacies alive. We'll see you guys. God bless you. And I'll leave you Thank now you, with a solo from our brother that we lost. Gone too soon. Yeah. Tim Bogart. God bless you guys. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you. Much love to you all. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Grease it down, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to this the other day. <laughs> That's that humor you're talking about there, Carmine. That's right. But a gang dang, but a dang dang, but a dang dang. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the saxophone. Yeah. yeah. Here, here comes the here comes the fun tone. There you go. Oh, not yet. Yeah, this is the clean sound. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo. We used to call that sound the elephant in heat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's yeah. The elephant sound. That's right. That's an amping scrim. The Billy, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're living in Asheville now. Yes, sir. You know, Rusty Day was there for a long time. Oh, uh, awesome. Uh, way back. How oh, beautiful. Woo! Yeah. Woo! It sounds the like best. the bass mic was in another room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh.